Hi guys, uh, so today we will talk about G1 garbage collector. So G1 is also known as garbage first garbage collector. It is basically designed for application running on multiprocessor machines with large memory space. So let's quickly see the examples. So we will check the garbage collector logs and from that logs, we will really able to understand how it is working internally. So I've created one loop here, which will create 100 K objects. And then I'm triggering the garbage collector here explicitly. And then we are creating one large array. And then we are again creating 5,000 objects in the loop. And then we are again triggering the garbage collector. So basically we are triggering the garbage collector twice. So what I will do, I will first compile this code. And then I will use this command to print the GC details and 256 MB, I'm giving the maximum heap size. And this is the path where the logs will be stored. So if you see here, the log file is empty now. So let me trigger this. <clears throat> so as soon as I trigger this, the program is running and now it's finished. So I will go to the log file. So these are our garbage collector logs using G1 garbage first. So let's analyze them in detail. So if you see here, uh, this is the version. And so I have 12 CPUs in my machine and my CPU memory or, and my RAM is 36 GB. Here we are giving maximum capacity as 256 MB. And, and then when system.gc got triggered, so the pause started. <clears throat> and if you see, it is using five workers. So for full compaction, so basically it's working in the four phases if you see here so the first phase is mark live objects so in this phase what gc is doing gc is identifying which objects are live or you can say which objects are in use and which objects are not in use and the objects which are not in use it they will be treated as garbage so all that marking is done in this step which took around 300 millisecond and then second phase is prepare for compaction. This phase involves tasks such as which objects will be moved and it is just preparing internal data structures for compaction. And phase three is adjust pointers because sometimes as part of compaction, your data will move, right? And when your data is moving in the memory, the references should be adjusted. So all this, so all that things will happen in this phase. And the fourth phase is compact heap so your heap is divided into five regions here, right? Add-in region, survivor region, old region, archive region, humongous region. So whenever any object is created initially, it will directly go to add-in region. It is also known as young generation and survivor region. Whenever the object in the add-in region survived your garbage collection cycle will move to survivor region. And the old region will be for the objects who are long lived objects in your code which survived multiple garbage collection cycle in survivor region will be promoted to old region so in our example there was no survivor region there was no old region right only all of our objects were in Eden region and they got cleaned up archive region is basically used by gc for optimizing the garbage collection cycle and humongous region is for storing the large data set and in our code there was no large data set that's why it's zero and zero and if you see the pause time was 1.408 millisecond so if your application have very tight pause time requirements then g1 garbage collector is really useful in your application this was the logs for this statement then let's check the logs for this statement when we declared this large array and these 5000 objects so if i go down same four phases happened right and same in the heap memory have five regions but if you see here before our add-in region was three but this time it's one because we only have five thousand objects before we had one lakh objects and survivor region was one now it's moved to already zero and if you see this is the main difference among us region so whatever array we stored right of uh, approximately 150 mb size so it was moved to among us region and then it was cleaned up because it's not in the use. So it took less time as compared to our first cycle because the object count was less in this case. So G1 garbage first garbage collector is very efficient when you are working with huge data set and it also takes advantage of multiprocessor machines and it's most efficient in achieving pause time goals.
So if you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that bell icon for more programming content.